Welcome to the Revive Ankeny Video Podcast, where we like to have honest and real conversation about life as a young adult through a biblical lens. I'm Zach Loquist. And I'm Ashley Lenz. Thanks for joining us. If you haven't already, please follow us on social media. We will post updates, challenges, connection opportunities, and of course, this podcast. Mm -hmm. We are on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and that's it. But you can also (laughs) text Revive to 515-500. 2292, which should be on the screen right now, and uh, that's a really good way to get connected with us as well. So we'll be excited to get to know you through that. Should we transition? Yeah, transition. Ashley, what's up with your cup? What's up with my cup? We are renaming this segment um, where we just chat about what's in our cup and or or about our cups. This week, I forgot an actual mug, so I have my my canteen thing major here. This is a Starbucks. Shocking. Thing. I worked at Starbucks, <laughs> so I got it for a deal, and it's like one of my favorite colors. It's kind of like that Tiffany blue-ish. I don't really know, but mm-hmm. it's the only one that I own like this, and I love it. And plug for Starbucks to get 10 cents off if you bring in a mug every time you go. What a steal. What a steal. <laughs> hey, if you go a lot, it adds up. <laughs> um, I have my uh, big house mug. Um, this was the... Uh, high school ministry that I volunteered for in Cedar Falls and big house big house yes engage build launch um, which actually that slogan then turned into my classroom slogan nice. engage build launch so putting in a little Jesus in my classroom I love um, it and the kids that I had through this I had them starting in eighth grade and now they're sophomores in college going to be juniors and that's I still amazing keep up with them and I just miss them and this just reminds me of them and there's coffee in so here so cool so oh thanks for sharing. We're so excited about our guest speaker, who we will introduce to you right now. Hey, Grant. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Hey, guys. How are you doing? So good. Thank you so much for joining us. Grant is my cousin, so I'm uber excited that he is with us today. Could you please introduce yourself? Yeah. So I'm, as Ashley said, I'm Ashley's cousin, Uh, but I'm also a physical therapist. Uh, I work in Ankeny at Elevate Physical Therapy. Um, I grew up in the area. in Johnston, actually, and then I went to Iowa State, uh, got my kinesiology degree, and actually ran track while I was there, and then went to the University of Iowa to get my physical therapy degree, and uh, ended up back in back in Central Iowa. So pretty awesome! And you have exciting news coming up. Yes, my fiance and I are getting married. Woo, obviously, yeah. as my fiance, but that's coming up in <laughs> October. Yes, so exciting! So <laughs> it's so good to have Grant here. We're talking about physical health today. And obviously, like, that's just been a big part of your life, running track. I mean, you were an athlete in high school um, and then becoming a physical therapist. So why did you choose physical therapy? And uh, tell us, like, what health means to you, what being physically healthy means and why it's important for you. Yeah. So to start with why I'm a physical therapist, um, you kind of hit it a little bit. I've always been a kind of, I'm not, I shouldn't say athletic. I've been an active person Um, and I certainly enjoy uh, being active, but I actually started, I was pretty, as Ashley knows, kind of nerdy in high school. I really liked math and science. And so I thought I would actually go into something like engineering, but, uh, that kind of changed. I knew I wanted to work with people a little bit and physical therapy was kind of the perfect solution of working with people, helping people, uh, but then including that physical activity side of it, uh, to enable people to, uh, in general heal from injuries, but also we hope, uh, get them kind of back on track to maybe live a more healthy lifestyle overall. And I suppose that leads me into your second part of your question, right? Which is uh, how do you, um, why is it important to be healthy? Uh, and obviously, um, you know, we want to take care of our bodies. We're stuck with this one body for, <laughs> <laughs> for our lifetimes. And yes. so uh, mm-hmm. to, to definitely, to be, um, to be healthy, you need to take care of that body. But, you know, it, quality of life, I think, goes pretty well hand in hand with your level of physical activity. And uh, there's so many things that they're showing with um, uh, changes in blood chemistry and some of those types of things where when you are stressed out uh, and you exercise, that improves so much. And so especially 
with current events the way that they are, things are fairly stressful in the world with COVID-19 and, and everything in the quarantines, that physical activity has been a huge part of, of managing that for a lot of people and, and should continue to be, in my opinion. That's yes. great. How would yeah. you, Grant, so as, you know, people are getting comfortable with their new normal with, and that looks different for a lot of people. Um, so what tips maybe do you have as a PT and just someone who's active for people to still continue to stay healthy um, now that, you know, things are getting nicer outside and um, people maybe want to start, you know, they're probably feeling, at least I am, like they, <laughs> they're feeling like, oh gosh, I haven't exercised as much as I probably should have. <laughs> so what tips could you maybe give to younger adults or just anyone who wants to stay healthy? Yeah, absolutely. So Zach, I think the biggest thing, I mean, you kind of hit on what the main problems are, right? Is that um, we have a hard time getting started and getting going and mm-hmm. being consistent with something. And so uh, I think those are really the main things we need to address. Um, as opposed to doing the right exercise, you know, I I don't think that there is an optimal form of physical activity for every person. Um, And so uh, if I could give direct advice to people in general, it would be that you need to do exercise that is meaningful to you. I mean, that you're passionate about for, for me, that's running. Um, Ashley, I know from a couple episodes ago that you like kickboxing. Um, Yeah. And so, you know, you find the thing that you're passionate about that you can enjoy doing, or maybe even that you're just, if you've never exercised before, or you've, you're out of the habit, something that intrigues you, something you're interested in. Um, and then at that point, uh, what you need to do, once you've kind of picked an activity or a few different activities or things you like, uh, then, you know, you need to make a plan and have that uh, figured out. So where you can take, you know, maybe where you're at and maybe figure out a goal to where you want to be. So running again for me, you know, if, if you want to start running and you want to be able to do uh, a five mile run or a 10 K race or something like that, you figure out that race, but then, or that distance or that time goal or whatever it might be. And then you uh, figure out what it's going to take to get there. I love that. And I think um, mm-hmm. health is such like physical health is such, um, it's such a holistic thing. And so uh, could you speak to, uh, having studied this and being a doctorate of physical therapy, um, how, like, how is being physically healthy? How does that influence like our brain chemistry and like everything else? Like you already kind of spoke to it a little bit, like how it impacts stress, but like, could you speak to the physiological, um, like implications of being physical, healthy, physically healthy? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I think everybody kind of knows about how, you know, if you exercise, you do your aerobic exercise, your activities, you're going to get better heart health, better lung health. But um, as you've said, one of the biggest things is how it affects our brains. And uh, they've done numerous studies about how physical activity uh, makes positive changes. One of the one of the ones that people are kind of most familiar with is, uh, is, you know, the, the dopamine release during uh, higher level activity. And they've actually shown, so dopamine being uh, a very positive, um, almost like a, I guess endorphin is, is the, the term for it, but basically it's, it's, a, it's a good chemical in your body. Um, and so accordingly, uh, that can decrease stress, that can improve uh, your, basically your overall well being, And, and it, it allows you to, um, you can uh, process things a little bit quicker. Um, you can actually retain memories better uh, because of that. And so there, there's a number of different things that in your brain allow us to maybe go through our daily lives better uh, because of physical activity, which is really cool. I love it. It's so awesome. And I think this ties into Jesus and the Bible really well. Like we're told that our bodies are a temple. And I think even in the Old Testament, there's, you know, there's laws about how we treat our bodies and what we put into our bodies. And God gave those to the Israelites so that they would be healthy and safe. And um, like Jesus had a bodily resurrection. And I just think, wow, like there's so much value in these physical things that we call our bodies. And so physically taking care care of them is actually very important. They are temples and the Holy Spirit dwells in them. And so I love, um, I just think it's such a testament to how God created us. When you talk about how, yeah, physical health actually releases uh, chemicals in our brain that like you said, contribute to our overall well-being. And I just think that's such a beautifully knit, um, a beautifully knit story that points to Jesus. It's like, oh yeah, we were created for a purpose. And part of that is taking care of our physical bodies. Mm -hmm. And I just, I I love it. And I'm thinking, okay, 
what practical advice. So I've actually seen, so Elevate Physical Therapy has like a Facebook page and you guys do, I've seen you during COVID showing stretches and things. So <laughs> tell us, how do we get moving if we're sitting at home? Uh, what's the benefit of stretching or, you know, something real simple that if we're sitting working from home or just working at a desk all day, like so many of us do, uh, what would you, what are some little things we can do to get moving throughout the day? Like normal life. Yeah. Uh, so honestly, the, again, kind of the best thing that I can, that I can tell people in general is we do find ourselves at maybe new postures when we're sitting at home, uh, because of so COVID. Or COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like uh, I can... <laughs> everyone just straight up a little bit. <laughs> I could say, it's funny that you say that actually, because, um, you know, we, we've always talked about, yeah, you know, our, our perfect posture. Um, we actually, um, we actually say that your, your best posture is your next posture. So accordingly, you're, uh, you're not necessarily better off to sit here like this the whole time you're sitting here talking to me, right? <laughs> it's better to be shifting and moving around. And so uh, to enable yourself to do that during your work day, and to maybe, I, I often have to encourage my patients because they get so caught up in their work to try and set a, set a timer, uh, put, a, put a timer on your phone and say, hey, every 30 minutes, I'm going to take, even if it's just a 30 second break, just to stand up, to move around, to mm -hmm. shift, um, bend in different directions and uh, kind of get out of the current posture and kind of reset so that you get basically more blood flow throughout your whole body uh, to basically interrupt the uh, prolonged postures that we see during the workday, so. So good. That's awesome. So it you, don't, is awesome. you don't have to set up straight all the time. Is what I'm trying to tell <laughs> you. Yeah. Like, no, I so know. I'm a, big, I'm a big sloucher. Oh man. So that is good. I have a question, Grant. You yeah. are a physical therapist, but also summertime means like grilling, barbecue. Like really, I feel like people tend to eat better during the summer, maybe. But what maybe tips do you have for people who are looking maybe like enhance their diet a little bit better so they can yes. start to feel better too? Because yeah. I know there's that connection there as well. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, we want to feel, feel ourselves properly. And, and generally speaking, I give, I give very general nutrition advice. I'm not a dietitian or anything, mm -hmm. uh, but along the lines of, of what you should be doing is, uh, trying to eat real foods, um, trying to eat real foods, trying to eat appropriate serving sizes, um, and, uh, trying to mix it up. Right. So, uh, just, keeping the broad variety and, and making sure to get, you know, your very natural fruits, like your fruits and your vegetables as much as possible too. So, um, yeah, well, I guess beyond well, that, I'd be, I'd, I'd probably direct you to a nutritionist or a <laughs> right, dietitian right, right. to some degree. Yeah. Um, yeah. one more question for Grant from me, at least Yeah. a lot of people, myself included, I'm putting myself in there. Um, when you just don't feel like working mm. out or exercising, what maybe like motivation or like pump up slogan could you give to me, us, <laughs> when we're just feeling like sluggish or yeah. like the situations around us are getting to us? Like how do you, you know, get back at it? Yeah, no, Zach, that's an awesome question. And I, I struggle with that myself too. Um, and so I can just kind of tell you some, some things that I've found success with and that other people uh, have told me that they've found success with. But um, those times when you're feeling sluggish are a lot of times the most important time to be exercising, right? Mm. Because of those positive changes we talked about earlier, the, the changes in your brain that happen with like, uh, you know, even just like actual diagnosable depression or anxiety, but even those kinds of feelings that we all get just here and there throughout the day, exercise does the opposite of what those things do from a chemical perspective. And so that's the time where you need to exercise. So just knowing that that's an important time to do so. Uh, should be somewhat motivating. Um, but the other side of it is uh, if you've, if you've gotten to the point where now it doesn't feel like the right time to exercise, uh, probably the things leading up to that point are, are what needs to have changed. So that's where, you know, as we talked about earlier, the planning side of things where, you know, if you say, no, today's Tuesday and I wrote down on Sunday that on Tuesday I was going to run three miles, then you're more likely to do it. Um, I know for people who have to exercise, like in the morning, for instance, that can be a hard thing to do. But mm -hmm. if you have your, if you have your running shoes, your running shorts, you've got your exercise equipment all set up, it's ready to go, and you plan on it the night before, that puts your mind in a better place to actually do that task because you put all that work in to get it set up to get ready for it. Well, you might as well actually do the do the right. activity. 
For sure. Oh, I love it. I think there's so many good, unfortunately, we're like almost out of time. Um, but I just, I'm so excited. This is such a good conversation. Uh, and we're going to continue having healthy conversations throughout the month of June. Um, but I just think there's so many good practical tips you've given us and just discussing the importance of being active, eating healthy, fueling our bodies. Um, but I'm excited. I feel like there's yeah. good challenges for us to walk into this week with. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say one of the challenges for me is making that plan. So I enjoy exercise. I enjoy being active, uh, but writing that plan down and you even said like, write it down. If you were down Sunday, do it. And there's, I mean, there's chemicals that are released yeah. when we write down goals too. So, um, that's my challenge this week is like writing down what my goals are and then walking those through. I'm there too. I hadn't had plans of making a Google calendar running plan oh, and yeah. I never did it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take your advice and actually write it down. So that way I get, it's on somewhere and it's going to notify me when it's like, all right, time to get your butt moving and go. Yes. Um, so thank you for the reminder. Grant. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything, uh, Grant, before we conclude, is there any, like we're a young adult audience, you're a young adult. What is like your biggest tip when it comes to physical activity, um, taking care of our bodies, just like a broad nugget that you could give us before we go. Ooh, a broad <laughs> nugget. Uh, <laughs> I put you on the spot there, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, as an overarching statement, I think, honestly, uh, stay active and don't feel, too, don't feel too obligated to do the right exercise. I think that's mm. something people get caught up in is thinking like, oh, I should run or I should swim. Uh, do what you enjoy and do it consistently. Um, and those, I think that's the biggest thing is to just stay active um, and, and do so. Challenge yourself and make goals and uh, when you make plans, be specific about your plans, you know, don't, don't say, and even, you know, it might help Zach as you're making your plan to say, oh, I need to figure out what miles I'm going to run each day this week. Yeah. It might help mm-hmm. to say, I'm going to do that, you know, Tuesday afternoon after this, you know, and, and actually plan the details because that makes you even more likely to follow through on it. So for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I think Grant's awesome. Like you, like you all know, we're family. So I just, I so appreciate your knowledge and your willingness to willingness to join us on this conversation. I also so. think Absolutely. you're awesome, even though we're not related. So yeah, this is good. <laughs> yeah, this is you're good. awesome. Thanks, guys, so. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much, Grant. We will see you later. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> yes. Bye. Bye. Uh, big thank you to Grant for joining us today. Um, just to continue this conversation about healthy habits and in our physical health, especially now that the weather's getting warmer, we can get outside a little bit more. Um, this week for your connection opportunities, we actually have a book study in the works. Yes. Um, so more details to come on that. Um, it'll be a young adult revived book study and we're really excited about that. Yes. Thanks so much for joining us. Stay tuned this week on social media for daily uh, updates, challenges, and ways to connect. And we'll see you next week.